Has your car ever been lasered by a skyscraper? Then you may be entitled to compensation. This is 20 Fenchurch Street. I don't think it's unfair to say that it's a controversial building. Some praise its unique and innovative appearance. Others view it as unsightly, self-indulgent, a monstrosity totally out of keeping with the local area. To Londoners, it's known as the Walkie Talkie. In 2015, the year of its completion, it won the Carbuncle Cup, the award given by Building Design magazine for the worst new building. The architect was Raphael Vignoli, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, and the current owner is Lee Kum Ki, a company that makes sauces and apparently buys skyscrapers. What else? What else? Oh yes, it used to fire heat rays at the surrounding area, melting cars and starting fires. The problem was noted in 2013 while the building was still under construction. Businessman Martin Lindsay parked his Jaguar on East Cheap and thought nothing more of it. When he returned, he was surprised to see that his beloved automobile had sustained severe damage, with panelling, one wing mirror and the badge all having melted. It appeared that, at certain times of day, the walkie-talkie was perfectly shaped to focus the rays of the sun into a beam of intense heat. The key factor was the concave shape. There's a legend that Archimedes built something similar to burn Roman ships circa 212 BC. Nothing to do with this video, I just thought it was interesting. Raphael Vignoli evidently wasn't familiar with the tale anyway. It seemed that the developers had not anticipated the amount of sun that the city gets. At the height of summer, the sun was perfectly positioned for around two hours a day to cause the phenomenon something Vignoli had not considered following his initial studies, or should that be Vignoli. He said that he hadn't expected London to get quite so much sunshine. Evidently he didn't know that the first rule of English weather is that we get plenty of sunshine, but only when we don't want it. When you're building an unusually shaped office building, you get it. When you're making a video about the effects of the sun on said building, you don't. In fairness, the developers, Land Securities and Canary Wharf, offered an apology and paid for the damage in full, and the City of London suspended the parking bays in the line of fire. Mr Lindsay said to CNN that, being in the construction industry himself, he understood that sometimes unexpected problems arise. But Mr Lindsay wasn't the only one to experience the wrath of the walkie-talkie. A van driver named Eddie Cannon stated that all the plastic on the left side of his van, including a bottle of Lucasade, had been melted by Apollo's fury, although I don't think he used those exact words. A local barber, Ali Akai, reported that a ray of heat actually set the doormat of his shop ablaze. Mr Akai commented, Customers are not going to come in if there is a fire in front of the door. No indeed, Mr Akai. I myself tend to avoid shops that are on fire. Other reports poured in of cracked tiles, singed merchandise and blistered paintwork. The building gained a new nickname, the Walkie Scorchy. Do you see what they did there? Developers reassured investors that while there had been, in their words, a solar glare issue, it had done nothing to deter lettings. They erected a temporary screen followed by a more permanent solution in the form of a Brise Soleil sunshade, which appears to have done the trick. So, whether the walkie-talkie inspires you or repulses you, at least it's not going to set you on fire. I hope you found that video interesting. If so, then please do hit like and you may want to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more of London's curiosities. What's your opinion on the walkie-talkie? Do you think it's innovative or an eyesore? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you very soon. Cheerio!